Welcome to a new video. Let's take a look at some new malicious compliance stories. The first story is called, You already know how to hold it? I'm currently fostering some tiny kittens that require bottle feeding every 4 to 6 hours. Not my first foster litter and definitely not my last. So far, they've been very nice, cute kittens. Our work has a LAX policy about bringing pets, so I've been bringing these guys with me since they need frequent feeding. Sometimes when a client comes in, I'll hand them a kitten while they wait, especially if they have a family with children with them. The kids are thrilled, the parents take photos of the kids being happy with the fuzzy animals and the kittens enjoy the attention. A win for everyone. The only thing is I know not every kid knows how to hold kittens, so I'm often explaining how to do it safely and offering support. Most times, the children are just excited with happiness and totally receptive to anything I have to say and things go well. Anyway, one evening we get this family that comes in, a mother and her three girls. The youngest is a toddler and passed out, the other two are like 7 and 10. The 10 year old is at that stage of life where she thinks she knows everything. She shows this in the way she talks to her mother and me. I already knew that mum. Complete with the eye rolling and scoffing, it's delightful. It's taking a while to get their stuff together, so to keep the 10 year old under control, I decided to offer a kitten. The girls seem thrilled and I grab a kitten. I go to the 10 year old first, much to the 7 year old's dismay and start to hand over the kitten to the older girl and say, okay, you want to make sure you're supporting the whole body. She rolls her eyes at me. Yes, I've held hundreds of kittens before. It's not new to me. I pause briefly and think, really? I'm about to hand you this adorable kitten when you literally had nothing to do before this and you want to try this with me? An evil idea comes up and I act fast. I snatch that kitten back before she can so much as brush its fur with her fingertips and plaster the sweetest smile on my face. You have? Well, this would probably be very boring for you then. Let's just go ahead and give him to your sister. And I proceed to hand the kitten over to the seven-year-old, who is just vibrating with excitement. I'm making sure to keep a hand on the kitten's body, so I can guide the kid through holding the kitten as I continue with, I don't think I've even held 50 kittens, much less hundreds. This kitten is so soft, but I'm sure you've seen softer. That was a lie, about how many kittens I've touched, I mean. That kitten was incredibly soft. It's got blue eyes. The seven-year-old yells to her mother. The other one looks devastated but can't do anything except sulk because after all, she's held hundreds of kittens. Needless to say, she left our office without so much as touching a pinky to that very soft kitten. The next story is called, Only With Approval. I work as a software developer for a large financial institution. For the past five years, I have been the technical expert and generally most knowledgeable person on our team about one specific, problematic system. As such, I have a lot of conversations with members of the business side, who use the application, even up to C-level executives. At least, that was the case up to the introduction of my manager's manager. About two years ago, we were having a discussion about a specific piece of work. In this case, I had sent an email to the business partners about a feature we wanted to add that our internal IT team could do. The business was asking if we could offload the work to the software vendor to save time, and I sent a message to the group, saying that we could, but it would still require resources from our side and could potentially cause delays, as the vendor has their own priorities and we have to wait. Now, the real problem was that we as a department had just implemented some new change management policies that the business tried to work around as much as possible. So, when I said that the fastest method was to follow the new protocols, my manager's manager found out. She believed that the business was always right, and that our job was to do exactly what the business told us to do. She told my manager that my email was out of line because I had represented the department to people above my position on the organization chart. Her solution? Every email I sent to the business, if it included folks in any level of management, had to be routed through her, so that she could review the email and sign off on it before it went to the business. Now, remember how I said the system is problematic? I will send messages to the business users at least five times a day regarding the application, including anything from small outages to responding to functional questions because I am the only one who knows the process. Since all these messages included the department managers, I would forward them on to her. Every single one. Need to let the business know we are deploying a change over the weekend and there will be an outage? Better get sign off. User having issues loading a file and asking for help figuring out why? Well, that user is a manager. So I need to get sign off on each email in the chain. And since she wants to sign off, I clearly can't just include her. 
Every reply needs to go to her and only her before being forwarded on to the business. I don't want to overstep my position as a peon. The third story is called, they will pay the same as me. So I'm now the owner of a landscaping business that my father started, he retired last year. He still checks in and helps a lot on the business end of things until I get my footing. We work in a city in South Florida, and about 95% of our customers are above the age of 60. My dad has three clients that we charge at a very low rate because they've used him since the start of the business. Two out of the three are great. They understand that they're being charged a low rate and love us for it. But we have one lady that is very hard to deal with. My dad refuses to let go of her contract without a legitimate reason, that's just who my dad is. She has two daughters and they both own homes with their husbands. We get a call from this lady, asking us to take on her daughters. I told her if she would like to give them our number I can talk with them and get it figured out. I was going this as a favor to my dad really because adding the two extra properties right now stretches us pretty thin and I'll probably have to help out as well as my cousin, who basically manages the cruise. Anyone will tell you expanding with a landscaping company is not as easy as it seems and it's bordering along the impossible without proper planning. So one of the two daughters calls in and gives me their details and I told them I could come out and meet them and give them an estimate as soon as possible. That was met with a few seconds of silence. And followed by, my mum had told me about the rate she paid, and we were under the assumption that we'd been paying those same rates. Unfortunately we won't be able to do that. We give her a special discount for being with us for so long. I'm sure my mother won't be happy to hear about this. Okay, she hung up the phone after this. So I don't think anything of it and tell my father what happened. We had a laugh about it and how entitled the people where we live are. Late that night, I get the call from the crazy lady. Let me explain something to you. We have a way of doing things in this town and you just broke rule one. The customer is always right. You told me you would take on my daughters and I expect you to do just that. I told your daughters I could take them on but not at the same rate. I never said I would be charging the same rate. Yes, you absolutely did and I expect you to hold to your word like your father would. He would be so disappointed in you right now. I'm guessing she didn't know my dad still took part in the business because he avoids her at all costs. Okay, I'll see what I can do. You better. This is just not how you do business. I went to my dad and told him about it. He told me to end her contract. I told him I had a better idea and he agreed to it. Now I say contract but it's just a monthly billing for her contract due to it being so low. So I call her back the next day. Hello, this is your landscaping company calling you back. I hope you have some good news because I still feel slighted. I have some news. We will be giving your daughters the same rate as you insisted. Perfect. When can I tell them you'll be over? We'll get to that. But we have to discuss your new rates first. What new rates? I didn't agree to new rates. Well, you requested to pay the same amount as your daughters. So we've taken away the special discount we've given you and your new rate will be 800 a month. That will start in two months from now. What came after was incoherent screaming and her hanging up. She called back the next day but refused to talk to me. She tried talking with my cousin but he referred her to me. She tried getting a hold of my dad but he shut off his work cell phone long ago. She eventually calls back and tried to negotiate with me but I told her it was all at her request and too late to go back on it. She dropped us the next month. She had been a thorn in my dad's side for so long. He was relieved when I told him about the call. He didn't want me to have the extra stress of dealing with her anyway. The last story, taking the garbage out wrong. I'm a paramedic in a large city. We went through a 10 year period of really awful management. I was working on a single person response vehicle, booking on and working by myself responding to emergency calls. As a result of our job, our vehicles had small containers for used equipment. The garage had a larger container for the same material. Because of our location, we had to take our red bag material and our regular garbage to the appropriate dumpster near the entrance to the facility. About a 500 meter trip. Being one of the rare people who emptied the garbage, I'd put the bags on the roof of my response unit and drive slowly and carefully to the entrance, dump the garbage, and carry on out to work my shift. Apparently, the nearby office has a view of the yard. A manager with too little real work to do noticed me doing this. He fired off an email saying I was unprofessional and shouldn't be moving garbage that way. 
My supervisor got the complaint and being the pushover who wanted a promotion, told me I had to walk the garbage from now on. I explained how this was a ridiculous waste of time but regardless, I was instructed to walk. Next time I needed to take out the trash, I picked up two of the four bags and started walking. When I reached the dumpsters, my radio went off calling me for an emergency. I notified dispatch that I was not near my vehicle and would be delayed for a few minutes, which is a big deal. A delay of more than a minute or two results in incident reports and an investigation. After the call, my supervisor met me and handed me an incident report, asking what happened. I explained and confirmed the spelling of his last name for my report, so I could indicate I was following directions. He backpedaled fast, knowing that the investigation would come back to him, it was amusing to watch. You'd think that was the end of it, but it's not. The same manager got wind of what happened and immediately fired back. It was my fault for not putting the garbage inside the response car and transporting it that way. The supervisor obviously failed to tell the manager that he had told me to walk. So, the new orders from the supervisor are, put the garbage in the response car. Four garbage bags dripping with who knows what went into the back seat. I dropped them off, then took myself out of service due to a possible spill on the back seat fabric. The supervisor met me and was mad. I asked him how he'd like me to handle the spill. As per the regulations, the vehicle had to be towed as the seat had to be replaced because it was impossible to ensure that everything was removed. And that's the story of how my supervisor is now responsible for taking out the trash. I delightfully watched him put the garbage bags on the roof of his car and drive them to the dumpster. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content. Let me know what you think about the stories in the comment section below. Have a great day. Bye bye.